Hello, this is Raina from Team Jesus Preachers, and today we have Christy here with us, which is a blessed sister in Christ. Um, Christy has come down from South Carolina and was interested in the open air evangelism and has joined us on a couple of different preaches. So we just want to share with um, some of the women out there her experiences and some of the things that um, she's been through and um, and just share a couple of words of her testimony. So, um, Christy, could you tell us a little bit about what sparked your interest in open air evangelism versus other methods? Sure. Um, well, a while back, I, I uh, probably like many folks, I stumbled across some street preaching videos on YouTube, but um, prior to that, I was just sort of watching sermons and things like that, and then, uh, you know, I, I saw a few videos. I saw one with Adam, and I've, I've seen a couple other street preachers as well. But I was really inspired by those videos because of the boldness that you see in, uh, you know, especially Brother Adam and, and you, of course, as well. So um, it's just something I, I felt the Lord calling me to do because, you know, I don't see hardly any street preachers in my town. I, actually, I've never come up on any. I've heard there are some, but I've never seen, seen any myself. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought, you know, maybe this is, the Lord keeps telling me he wants me to be bold. I know that. And uh, just the idea that this is something that I feel like the early church did, things that, you know, people were heralding the gospel on the street corners, you know, trying to get people to come in uh, and to know the Lord, and I feel like this is something that here we are in the last days, and we're we're needing to do it again. And I just see um, I see brothers like Adam and some other brothers like Kerrigan, for example. You know, um, it's just inspiring to see it. It makes me want to get out and do it myself, and it's encouraging. Um, and particularly your videos, being a woman, it's it's encouraging as a woman to see that and to want to get out and do it too. Because, you know, um, the Lord put it on my heart, like I said, but sometimes when you're a woman, you think, well, maybe I'm not supposed to. But the Lord has really shown me that he wants me to get out and speak the truth to people. So, yeah. Amen. When Sister Christy called and mentioned that she wanted to come down and join us for a preach, um, the next major event that we had coming up was Fantasy Fest. And I was really encouraged by her boldness and her faith to want to come out as her first preach and participate in Fantasy Fest, which is a very ungodly, um, difficult preach to preach, especially as your um, first one. So, uh, Christy, do you want to talk about um, some of the things that were running through your mind, um, some of the preparation that we made prior to going and preaching at Fantasy Fest? Yeah, uh, well, I can definitely say before, um, you know, when I committed to come, it was, I maybe had a little bit of a different picture in my mind of what it was, and uh, I'm so glad that I did come because it definitely, as far as like the first preach to do, it was a challenge. Like, it was hard. I mean, these folks are, are there uh, deep in sin, and they are not, you know, they don't want to hear any preaching, you know, so... Um, but they need to hear it. These are the people that need to hear it the most. And, uh, you know, the preparation is so important. You know, the first time I preached uh, to these folks out there, you know, uh, Sister Raina is holding the bullhorn for me and everything because I, I wasn't, I didn't feel so sure of myself to actually operate all the equipment and try to preach at the same time. But um, just the fact that, you know, I had memorized a little bit of scripture prior to that. I could see how important memorizing scripture is for preaching because, you know, um, I was able to use those verses, and it's God's word that truly convicts people. It's not me doing it so much. You know, I might be able to share my testimony, um, which I did, but I feel that it's God's word that really pricks people's hearts and makes them understand that they're living in sin and they can't weasel out of it that way. So I just felt that... Um, the one thing that I thought of, you know, walking away from even that preach and every preach after that was, I need to know more scripture. You know, I need to prepare more. Um, and, you know, yes, the Holy Spirit leads us on these things. And clearly he, he led me to, to talk about my testimony. I wasn't even, I wasn't even sure if I wanted to preach. And then it was all of a sudden like the Holy Spirit said, 
share your testimony. And I did that, and uh, then he brought scripture to my memory that, you know, some scripture I had memorized. Um, so it, it's just evident that it's a combination of both. You know, you need the Holy Spirit to be guiding you on what you're going to say and not just do it in the flesh, but you also need, um, in my experience, what I have experienced, I needed to have that, that preparation beforehand. I needed to have uh, the scripture in my memory. I needed to, you know, pray to the Lord before going and worship and try to figure out what is it that you want me to tell people today. So um, it's just interesting how each type of preach is different and, um, you know, dependent upon who you're going to be speaking to, you know. So to me, um, it seemed to me that the Lord was showing me that, you know, you need to prepare differently for each one and you need to say different things to each group of people. You know, because they're not all in the same sins, and some are, you know, uh, need to be convicted of things that maybe they don't even think is sin. It's not just outwardly, you know, obvious. So, just a lot that goes into it. And I was thankful to have uh, examples and Adam and Rena to um, know what that means to prepare and that how important um, scripture memorization is. So. Yeah, I absolutely agree with um, Sister in, in um, exemplifying the importance of Scripture and and through um, searching out the Scriptures, preparing to go out and to share a message with the people, it deepens that relationship that you have with Christ, with His Word. You, um, you see all the different tenses that are used in the Bible, past, present, future tenses. You see every jot and tittle, so it, it just really just captivates your soul, just that intimacy that you're spending with the Lord through His Word, and, and having that desire to want to share His Word with other people. Um, you mentioned that there is different types of preaches. Um, when we came back from Fantasy Fest, we had an opportunity to preach at um, a second year college as well as a university. We had the Trump rally, and we also did a trick or treat, a massive trick or treat preach. I've never seen anything like this before. Um, we'll be posting the video shortly. And. Um, um, uh, Christy, would you like to talk about when you said that there was different types of preaches? Would you like to talk about that a little bit more? Yeah. Uh, well, just the the examples that you just mentioned. Uh, you have, you know, the universities where uh, uh, more often than not, you you sense just the, the a lot of mockery and ridicule because what they're being taught in universities is that God is not even real in most cases. And so you come there and you sense that. And uh, you feel like, you know, in my case, I felt like the Lord was telling me that I need to remind these these kids that his, even his foolishness is wiser than men. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord's foolishness is wiser than men. Um, which, you know, that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Um, the passage I memorized was 18 through 31, so I'm not sure exactly which verse. But... You know, these are the things that uh, were on my heart for universities, you know. Um, and in addition to this, so, you know, when you're going to a university, for example, you know, thinking about who's, who's going to hear the message, you know. You've got professors that might hear the message, too. You've got students. And, uh, you know, just like I said, they're being taught to not even believe that God is real. So you have to kind of come from that um, perspective to, to reach those kids. Like... It's almost like you have to go back to the basics and even talk about why God is real and, and uh, bring up the scriptures that, that prove God is real even through the evidence of creation. Um, so, and then in, in contrast, you know, uh, at the Trump rally, for example, you know, it was on my heart that um, these folks are people who gen generally profess to be Christians. You know, they're already, they're not denying God in most cases because they're conservatives or they identify as conservative Republicans. So those individuals uh, can sometimes put patriotism above Jesus Christ. And so it was on my heart there that I needed to prepare a message to people who um, might, might need to be pushed a little harder about standing up for righteousness, you know, um, not letting, you know, not tolerating different things and not uh, not allowing um, patriotism to become an idol in their lives. And so that was a, a totally different type of preach. And then 
uh, you know, for example, the Halloween, the trick or treat, even though I didn't get to preach that night, what I felt the Lord was telling me is that we're preaching against demons and evil in, in these kinds of cases, you know, because there's a lot of demonic spirits out in a Halloween environment. And we saw them manifest because people were, you know, wanting to get violent and, and saying things like, you know, if the cops weren't here, you know, you guys would be in trouble. And it's like, you know that, you know, you're going into a dangerous place. And so to walk in there with no preparation and have no idea what you're going to say, you know, in my opinion, would not have been a smart thing for me to do. So um, although, like I said, I did not get to preach that at that particular event, um, I wanted to be prepared every single time. And I do feel that, that the Lord blessed me um, when I did prepare like that with giving me, you know, um, giving me the scripture and, you know, downloading it sort of into my memory when, and it would surprise me because, you know, maybe one that I hadn't practiced as much, you know, but just, just the effort that we're putting into it in the beginning, it seems the Lord was rewarding that, um, by just giving me more than I, than I didn't even think of while I'd be speaking in different situations. So it's a, I mean, it is definitely, uh, a lot more difficult than I thought it would be, and you don't really understand the gravity of what you're doing until you really get out there. So, um, a lot of responsibility, and these are souls on the line. So, for me, I, I don't want to go out there and say something um, that is not something the Lord wanted me to say, or, or you know, that uh, they could be e easily disproven by someone looking at uh, in the Bible. You know, it, I feel like it's it was definitely important to prepare each time. Yeah, it's it's amazing um, the covenant relationship that's manifested because you step out by faith, um, preparing in the scriptures, and then the Holy Spirit brings forth that word that that you meditated on and or um, memorized and God comes forth in power and it's such a blessing because it really requires trust and faith but God is faithful and and he has um, just used us in so many ways and we're nothing we're just we're just a, a vessel mouthpiece and we're just grateful to be used by the Lord um, sister is there um, before we end is there a, a word that you would like to share with the ladies about um, preaching, maybe some of the blessings that that you've encountered, but um, but maybe how um, how to really consider or count the cost um, to see if you're called to do this. Would would mm -hmm. you give a word about that? Yeah. Um, well, I would definitely say, um, you know. I know that the Lord wants us all to, uh, you know, evangelize. You know, that's the Great Commission. Um, as far as preaching goes, I think that the Lord gives you confirmation. He's done that with me. Um, he's de definitely showed me and opened the doors in many ways for me to be in, uh, in a position to preach. You know, he's confirmed in several ways, whether it be by people coming up and, and actually wanting to engage in conversation that maybe would not have wanted to do that otherwise. Um, there is an example uh, at the first preach where um, there was a, a girl in a wheelchair that was very upset by the preaching she was hearing from someone else at that point and left and then came back. Um, and while I was preaching, she, or after I was preaching, she actually approached me and was more apt to listen. And she actually uh, ended up getting a number, a phone number of another uh, girl that was on campus that day that actually led a Bible study. And so the Lord was really working in that sense to bring together ladies. And you don't see a lot of women preachers, but sometimes uh, it looks like, you know, some of the women that are out there need to hear a woman, um, mm -hmm. her perspective. and. Uh, that was not the only example of that. I had two people approach me that day, two women. And then, um, you know, there have definitely been other times where, you know, it is the women are, they just seem more attracted to the woman's message. And I'm not going to say that's, I don't want to stereotype and say all women are that way, but I definitely see that they can appreciate the softness and the gentleness and the meekness that a woman brings even when she's preaching because we're not out there screaming at the top of our lungs, but we are. Uh, lifting our voice up like a trumpet, you know, we're, we're declaring the gospel of Christ and telling the truth, and um, we do it in a different way than men do, and I, I believe the Lord uses that, 
in a situation where um, got a lot of unbelievers out there and women are some of those unbelievers that may need to hear that message and um, sometimes it, I, it just seems to me from the reaction that I've gotten so far from other women um, that that's kind of what they needed that day you know they needed that um, another woman to tell them the truth about Jesus and about sin and hell even um, so you know of course, women, we have to remain meek and gentle. Uh, and, you know, it, it can be a hard balance. But at the same time, when the Lord confirms these things to you, and you, you're not going out there and railing, you're going out there and telling the truth, letting people know how much you love them. That was uh, one of the things I wanted to include every time I preach, is um, I want these folks to know that I'm not here because I'm, I'm wanting to condemn them. I'm here because I, I want to see them saved. And that's the entire purpose behind what we're doing in the first place, because we want to see people yes. saved. And um, some people need fear, some people need love, you know, and, and you sort of give a little bit of both and, and you know, uh, get feedback from that. So, um, uh, you know, I would say that for women, don't think that just because you're a woman that you can't preach. If the Lord is calling you to do it, just make sure you're looking for these confirmations, you're in prayer. Um, and understand that it's a serious responsibility too because we are held to a higher uh, you know standard when we get out there telling people the truth about God you know we can't just say something um, half-heartedly or not knowing what we're saying we have to make sure that we're preaching from the word from God's word we're we're his mouthpieces and his vessels like you said so it's important for us to remember that it is not our show here this is all for the Lord and um, the goal is to win souls. So, um, yeah, it's a it's a big responsibility, and uh, but I believe the Lord is is giving it to many people these days. So be encouraged. You know, don't be fearful. That's the other thing that I wanted to mention. Um, you know, the fear is is what takes us over in, in many situations like this, especially to get out and preach to people who don't want to hear it, who are going to mock us, and maybe even worse but you know uh the lord in my in, in my experience i'm going to feel that fear but he rewards me when i'm obedient and speak up when he's asked me to when he's put it on my heart when i preach to these folks he's then the, the fear starts leaving it's it's amazing you know um so one thing i would say is like don't expect the fear to be gone before you preach because it's still going to be there you're going to be nervous you know um, but when you are obedient then the Lord will he, he gives you more confidence it's it's a it is a supernatural thing you know it's not us so amen praise God well thank you so much for sharing all that I hope it was an encouragement to y'all out there and I would just like to end on this note. Um, Lord was ministering to me as I was listening to Sister Christy testify. Um, I'd like to just share really quick Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. In Jesus, amen. All right. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? The Savior of the world if they choose to turn to him and repent. Everyone knows John 3.16, right? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But most of the time you don't hear the rest of the verses. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the only begotten, the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But everyone who does the truth comes to the light, 
that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. What camp are you in tonight? Are you the sinner? Or are you redeemed from sin? Are you being cleansed from sin? So we need to make sure that we're not living by the teachings of men, that we start to look at what is the truth? Truth is not relative. There is a truth and it's found in God's word. And if you're not reading it, you're walking around deceived. You need to know the truth. It will set you free. Now people think that sin is freedom. It's enslavement. You're, sl you're a slave to something that your flesh is desiring. You've got to crucify that flesh so that you can live in righteousness to the Lord. And there is true peace. You don't have peace. You do all this partying. You don't wake up with peace. You have a hangover. You know, I mean, peace comes from living for the Lord, turning from sin. Okay. And then another thing that many people don't even think is a sin, gossip and slander. How many gossipers do we have out here? How many people talk about people behind their back? You know, how many people wish other people ill will and talk about them behind their back? I mean, are you really trying to help people be better people or are you just wanting to destroy them? Do you want to see them hurt? Do you really love people? So the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 5, it talks about uh, people being gossipers and busybodies, you know, filling their time with things that don't matter. So just remember that there is a lot of wisdom in this word. Okay? And for those of you who think we're not supposed to be preaching and telling you these things, if you love the Lord and if you love people, you will speak His truth. And the Bible tells us in Isaiah 58, 1, to cry aloud, spare not, lift your voice up like a trumpet, tell my people their sins. So being quiet and letting people live any way they want is not loving. You love people, you warn them of the truth. You let them know where their sin is going to send them. Are you fearful of men or are you fearing God? God is whom we fear. We don't fear men. We don't fear death. That is the blessing of a true born-again believer in Christ. You come out and you face ridicule. You face scrutiny for Jesus Christ and because you care about souls. Because you want people to be saved. So how badly do you want people to be saved? If you do say you know the Lord. How much do you love people? Do you love them enough to lay down your life for them? Jesus said that's what love is. You lay down your life for a friend. So, you know, if we're going to preach that we love to people, we, we're loving, we're kind. If we're really loving, we warn people of the truth. And if we don't even know the truth because we're not studying the Word of God, then that's no good either. You know, we need to know what God says to know Him. If we're just trusting a pastor to tell us, then we're going to be deceived. Because the Bible says, like, God be true and every man a liar. So don't trust men to tell you what God says. The Bible also says that we, not, we don't need that any man teach us. The Holy Spirit teaches you the truth. And when you get into this word by yourself with God, He'll show you where you've been led astray. He showed me many, many things. And only three and a half years ago did I come to the truth when I thought that I was saved at 28. I'm 43 now. At 28, I thought I was saved. And I was living just like everybody, just doing the same thing, same things everybody does. Not paying attention to the things of God, not reading the word, just depending on my pastor every Sunday to tell me the truth. And there are a lot of lies out there, people. Matthew chapter 7, starting with verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear good fruit or bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So... In this passage, Jesus is confirming that there are many people 
who will come to you saying they represent him and that they will not be speaking the truth to you, that they'll encourage you to continue your life the way it is, to be satisfied with the pleasures of the flesh, the things that you enjoy in this life, which are sinful at times. So the Bible tells us what sin is. It defines it. And Jesus says in Revelation chapter 3 that lukewarm Christians will be spewed out of his mouth, vomited out of his mouth. So it's important to realize the way we live is our testimony. The way we live, and even if you're not a Christian, sin is, it, sin is rampant on college campuses. It's important to realize that everything that you do and say you'll be judged for. Every idle word that men speak, they'll be judged for on the day of judgment. So the most important thing you can do is consider these things.